Okay, so please, if you are just joining, ensure to mute yourself. So, um, let's start again. Welcome to every one of you to Blockchain Could Give It's Come 2.0. Um, today being the 13th of November 2023. On the 16th of November 2023, will make us um, one year old since we started training. On 16th of November 2022 was the first day we did the first training you get. And I think the first time we made mention of blockchain cooking in a public event should be September 2022. That was when the initiative of blockchain cookie was made public. And ever since then, we've been able to register the company as a legal entity with the Nigerian government. Like I was saying, Blockchain Kogi is a CSE registered um, borderless learning community hub and our goal is to serve the over 4 million citizens of Kogi State with cutting edge skills. That's why we are drafting out the cohort that's going to cover about five different skills we are starting with to get. So after that, um, after this boot camp, we would have a test and that test will be like the bridge to assessing the scholarship we offer for the cohort the cohort is meant to be paid and if you're going to value what you are giving you should be around 150 to 200 dollars so we are on our end ensuring we sort whatever bills needed we filled whatever bills needed to ensure we get this scholarship across to you so i believe each and every one of you should take it very serious and learn the skill because we'll also be giving you um certificate to prove that you learned what um we taught you and that certificate will be vetted based on exams you get so um yes that's about it the welcome speech um about bootcamp 2.0 so um without wasting our time let's move to the deal of the day so um today we'll be starting our talk from evolution of money yes evolution of money what is money what actually is money and um because we need to know the basics we need to build a basic um foundation before we can say we are advancing so we will be learning a lot of things normally people don't really get the foundations people don't really get in this space i will try as much as possible to make the classes very brief and maximum the next 45 minutes to one hour should be done so evolution of money what is money money is a universally accepted medium of exchange that facilitates transaction and the purchase of goods and services. That means whatever facilitates transactions uh, and purchase of goods and services can be called money, you get. So if today the world decides that, okay, we want to start facilitating transaction using um, calories, we'll get to that point, meaning calorie will become the money we spend. So the money you spend is dep dependent on what is um acceptable to be called money hope you guys are following so money serves as a unit of amount providing a standardized measure of value and as a store of value allowing wealth to be saved and accumulated over time what this place simply means is um with having that stuff people have um the government has approved to the money um you can now enhance those things and we we'll now know you accumulated much of it so for instance if they say biscuit should be called money if you have 10 biscuit that means you've accumulated wealth if you have um 100 biscuit meaning you've accumulated much money so money is what is um generally accepted to be a store of value to facilitate transactions and purchase of goods and services so um let's proceed okay so um this is the evolution of money how it all began so we had commodity money um those days when we had this um trade by but i know some of us did it in social studies where um if you have tender uh, if you have salt and i need pepper i'll give you salt and get pepper then um there was a challenge to that system of um money well, there was a challenge to that system of transaction sorry no money and the challenge to that system of transaction is today if i need salt and i don't see who needs salt meaning my transaction is not successful you get so we had the commodity money in the earliest period of human civilization any commodity that was generally demanded and chosen by common consent was used as money so we had the trade by butter system where um you 
I have explained that. So we now move from that trade by butter system to what we call calories. You get so in those days, if you have calories, we tend to say you are wealthy. You get if you have calories, we tend to say you are wealthy. But over time, we discovered those um, stores of value or um, um, means of facilitating transactions were not sustainable for a long period of time. I can have yam for like two years and nobody's willing to collect yam. So I'll be forced to do with what I have and what I have might not be what I want You get. So please, if you have any question at any point, ensure you drop your questions in the chat section. And please, at any point you don't hear me again, show as much as possible to drop um, a message in the chat sections. Thank you. So we moved from that calories, um, trade by butter system, we moved into the metallic money. The second phase was the metallic money. With the progress of human civilization, commodity money changed into metallic money. Metals like gold, silver, copper, etc. were used as they could be easily handled and their quality could be easily ascertained. So we moved into the um, metallic money where we started using gold, um, copper, silver and the likes as store of value you get. So if we decide to use, um, what is it called? Go back to um, normal Kobo, you know, as of 1990 something, I, I was still used to using all this Kobo you get. So um, if we go back to using all this Kobo, Kobo, once the government approves that, okay, this is what we should call money, it becomes a legal tender. And that is what we'll be forced to use, whether we like it or not, you get. So we now move from that um, section to where we call the paper money. So the paper money is like your paper, Naira, Kobo, mm, sorry, not Kobo, Naira, um, 100 Naira, 200 Naira, $1, $10, $100, $1,000, um, Yen, um, Pounds, Euro, and all. Those are paper currencies. So um, over time, let me just um, go through what we have here. It was found inconvenient as well as dangerous to carry gold and silver coins from place to place. So the innov innovation of paper money marked a very important stage in the development of money. So when we discover, okay, for instance, now, you know, if you watch those American films, when you see people carry gold, they either go with extra kind of security and all you get. So imagine when they were using gold, if you get, and security was not as standard as this. So there was a whole lot of challenge around using that form of store of value. It's still being used up to today, but um, the world has adopted another store of value, which is called paper money, you get. And people that maximized the transformation when it came, that's paper money, are most of the um, rich folks we have globally, you get. So um, when innovations come, people that move first are actually the ones that actually maximize the most out of it. So um, I'll be talking in later times about um, first movers advantage. Yes, it's very, very important. We are still very early in the crypto space. I think we are just about 13 or 15 years within that range in the crypto space. And we've seen a lot of development. It's still very, 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 very new. Most of the innovations are still in the experimental stage. So you, as I'm talking to you now, you are still very early in this space. So all you need to do now is to get the basics, understand how the system works, understand how you can maximize that system and get to work and get things done. So when we move from, when we move from the uh, metallic money to the paper money, um, innovation started popping up. And I think in 1991, we'll still go back to those dates, but I just wanted to rephrase. In 1991, somebody came up with the, um, the concept of blockchain. So most people feel blockchain came in 2008 and all, but the first inception of blockchain was around 1991. So we'll see that. So now the new projection of store of value is what we call um, a blockchain so we are seeing how we could move from being controlled by people to because all the paper money came with centralization 
in the sense that we have a CBN that controls all our money. Let me also tell you that the money you have in CBN is not even your money because if you have, there's a certain amount of money you have now that will enter your account, they will block your account, you get, and they will be asking for too many questions. That's happened to me before, I think about two years ago, there was a money that came into my account and they actually freeze the account and thank God I had um, connections with the managers in the bank. I had to call him and I was like, so this is it, this is it. And he was asking me why, what am I using that money for and all. And it was so dramatic because they were not willing to even give me the money if I'm not going to state a good reason. You get so for sometimes they were like, I should come and write official statement and blah 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 blah. But because I could find my way around it, we actually got it out. So why I'm saying that the money in your account is not actually your money, is this for instance, let's use um which country now? Let's use when the Russia was at war, when they were doing all this Russia crisis. So, some of those affected countries, imagine you are a citizen there and you work in the bank. I don't want to use Nigeria as an example. We don't want war, you get. I don't want to use Africa as an example. We don't want war. So, imagine you had money in those countries as fiat, like paper money in your bank account, and there's a war, and bombing has happened. Definitely, the banks will fold. You barely witness that those times that uh, um, banks used to go for public holiday, whether you like it or not, whether you have money or not, if ATMs are not dispensing, you don't have access to your money. You cannot do anything with your money. So it's one of the major challenges. You know, the transition of money is come because there's a challenge. I used to tell people, wherever you see a challenge, is an avenue to provide solution and when you provide solution you get money in return money always is a reward for value money always is a reward for value never forget that so if you want money just position yourself where you get you give value and you get money automatically it can't be stopped so the challenge about this was centralization because i can go to my bank today and they'll tell me okay bro we just freeze your account go and bring this, 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 that, and I can't say anything um, more. I have to comply. So he brought out this system that, okay, we can use a technology where um, multiple people can be controlling this money, like multiple entities can be controlling this money. Let's lift our, the, 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 the commitment of our, our money from a central entity to a decentralized entity. So we don't want only CBN to control our money. We want both CBN, union, different banks, even individuals like you and I can now control this money if you want to position yourself to start controlling those money. You get so that was the um advent of blockchain. So let's move on. Let's move on. Okay, so um the history of blockchain. So we've moved from the history of money. To the the evolution of money to the history of blockchain so um the history of blockchain dates back to 1991 when cryptographically secured blockchain could be used to timestamp digital documents however the term blockchain only came into use in 2009 so now this is it now okay when we we'll start talking about ledger technology i think i'll be able to explain this more so in 2008, um, Satoshi Nakamoto, we don't know if it's a person, we don't know if it's a group, that's why we stated it here, um, came up with the um, first cryptocurrency to scale, not the first cryptocurrency to exist, you get. Existing, the first cryptocurrency to exist is not Bitcoin, but the first cryptocurrency to scale, like to be successful, is Bitcoin. So in 2009, he did it, and he did it, with a lot of anonymity till so today we don't know who satoshi nakamoto is so currently bitcoin uh currently blockchain technology is being explored for a wide range of applications beyond cryptocurrency including supply chain management identity verification voting system and more so these are some of the places you can use blockchain technology notes you 
people normally confuse cryptocurrency for blockchain technology before the end of this class you will understand the difference between cryptocurrency and blockchain technology um let's move on so what is blockchain blockchain is a technology that enables the secure sharing of information data is stored in a database transaction in a database transactions are recorded in an account book called ledger so um in our normal life in our normal techno um, banking system in our normal people money world they use what we call ledger and the ledger used to be like a record book where they store all the data or the um, deposit withdrawal and all so they now moved from having it paper there was a time where people could actually stress more they were stressing more to withdraw i, I remember around 2002 2001 if you want if they want to send you money it's going to be a very strong headache war you get so you have to go and queue in the um, counter and all they can even you can do a whole day and not still get that money you get because the processes were very very tedious but as time moved on we now saw transformation into sector where they started using computers before we now started using our phones to do the transfer you get as of 2008 2009 ussd transfer was not much rampant you get so it's of recent we can now use our phone now you can now scan qr code that's the advent of technology so one of the basic things you learn from this class is to evolve with technology because the more we go you like it or not technology will keep popping up and this is it now we, you you might not if you fail to adapt to that technology you would have to adapt when the technology has left you behind you get so technology can leave you behind and you have to start it's just more like our fathers in those days they, they knew when um um ussd started but they did not want they were not inquisitive to learn it so up to now some of our parents still don't know how to use ussd technology has left them behind so as a young person you need to be consistent in this space and understand that technology whether in the crypto space because we are not just only focused on blockchain We'll be going into video editing, graphic design, um, other aspects. And all those aspects you are going into will be able to guide you on how to use it to get into the blockchain. Because all those things we are teaching you are blockchain related. You can learn graphic design and use it to gain, make money from the blockchain. You can learn video editing and use it to make money from the blockchain. You can learn affiliate marketing and use it to make tremendous money from the blockchain so that's the basic reasons why we are passing you through these basics so you understand the basics so when you go for the 90 days mastery you'll be able to get that skill and once you get that skill i will give you certification i don't know we already created that group if you discover on our on whatsapp community there are various groups that are there but we we, we have very limited people so most of the people that finish from cohort one successfully, we are moving them there. When you finish from cohort two, you will move there. It's only those that have finished and got the certificates that are permitted to join those groups. So um, some persons have requested to join and the request, I believe, should have been declined by um, one of the admin or so because the intent of that group is to ensure people that are certified and moved to that group so over time you'll be able to see okay the cohort one people cohort two people all of them in one group those that studied video editing from cohort two, two all of them you, according to your niche you'll be able to talk to people with like minds and grow faster so um like i said um in the paper currency time we were using ledger so without uh, this um concept of blockchain is that okay instead of this ledger to be controlled by one person why don't we have multiple blocks multiple um, facilities that can house this information that means if we are 30 now the 30 of us can have a copy of this thing and it's no longer um controlled by one central authority the data we are gathering is no longer controlled by one central authority we had issues with facebook one years back and maybe one or two years where we heard that facebook sold some people's data and he actually landed into a court case i think i don't know i'm not very sure but i think the, we had that crisis around data sharing but if it comes to the blockchain it's not just going to be only facebook controlling it it's going to be a ton of people 
validating these transactions and making sure okay um we are not controlled by a central authority but as you go deep you get blood broader view about all this so um what is a ledger a ledger is a digital or physical log that records transaction associated with the financial system blockchain networks are a type of distributed uh, ledger system designed to store data securely so and blockchains are a form of digital ledgers that validate and store all information within their network for example the bitcoin blockchain records all transactions involving bitcoin using blocks secured by cryptograph you get so um i think i've showed more light on this and um so we'll be moving to the benefits of blockchain you get so this class is basically to bring it down to the basics when we start moving into advanced like i said on the group you will know how to buy anything you want to buy by yourself you get i've stopped using vendor for a very long time and my own vendor and most people around me know i used to encourage people to be their own vendor nobody's going to give you a rate and all if you have people you can sell to you can turn the vendor stuff to a business why not but it's not the financial advice so um so we have decentralization benefits of blockchain hope you are writing down because we'll be having a test and it's going to be based on what was taught all these things we are teaching we'll be having a test based on it hope you guys are jotting down what you've learned you get okay so um decentralization is one of the first benefits of blockchain so uh, the decentralized nature of blockchain means that there is no one single point of control or failure which can make it more secured and resistant to attack or data breach you get so i think this is self-explanatory um decentralization is the first that means eliminating middleman i used to tell people when you hear the word blockchain one of the pictures that you should paint in your mind is eliminating middleman replacing middlemen with more everybody that means on the blockchain everybody you can join and have a say you can join and have it if you understand what you're doing in the space you can join and have a say so two we have transparency transactions on the blockchain are visible to all participants making it easier to track and verify transactions and ensure their accuracy i used to hear people say and hey, blah 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 i mean they do uh, fraud and they use crypto to collect it that you can't trace crypto let me bust your bubble you can is is the easiest things to trace you get except probably there's no the best way the best approach was not used because if you say you sent money to me on the blockchain yesterday i can use your wallet address to check the time you sent it it's going to be there publicly on the chain you will see it if you say you sent um um ethereum to me yesterday afternoon if i check it it's going to show me the time you sent it the gas fee you used to send it the amount you sent it you get so i think on the third day when we move into a full practical i should be able to touch around this briefly so that you have a basic concept of it because not everybody is going to be focusing on blockchain it's going to be on your choice so but i believe if you um are doing any other skill any other um part of the skills you should know some few basics on how this stuff works so the second is transparency the third is immutability once a transaction is recorded on the blockchain it cannot be altered and or deleted it creates a permanent record of all transactions that can be verified by anyone with access to um, the blockchain network this is significant department from traditional system where transactions can be reverse are reversible for instance now if you do mistake and send um, a bitcoin to a wrong wallet address it has gone there's nothing like they want to reverse it there's nothing like they want to um once a transaction is approved on the blockchain it's permanent you get once a transaction is approved on the blockchain it's permanent so you need to take note of that also 
Okay, so once the transaction is approved on the, on the blockchain, it's permanent. It's permanent. So um, let's move to the next one. Sorry. Efficiency. Yeah, that's number four. Efficiency. Efficiency. The blockchain can enable faster and more efficient transactions because it does not require intermediaries such as bank. For instance, now, if there are some transactions you will do that they will tell you that because it's weekend, your transaction cannot be successful, you have to wait till um, a Monday morning. They'll tell you your transactions cannot be successful, you have to wait till a Monday morning. But when it comes to blockchain, it's 24-7. You can do transactions on Sunday and get it delivered and do everything successfully. Then, um, another thing is low fees. That's by estimating intermediaries and aut automating processes, blockchain can reduce transaction costs and make certain business operations more efficient. Like, for instance, now, if you want to use MasterCard, uh, there's an intermediary between both you, MasterCard, the um, settler, and the person you are sending, the who is receiving the transaction. It's about four, three different, two middle processes before your transaction gets successful using your card. But with blockchain, if I want to do a transaction, you can have instant settlements you get. So, and the cost, because of all those transfers, all those um, middlemen, because they will collect transactions, currencies, like pounds and dollars across borders, you would have to pay higher um, cost. But with blockchain, you can project a lesser fee over time. So, and it's relative. This statement is very relative because we have chains like Ethereum with high fees. But when you know more, you understand why we say the fees can be low. We have chains like Binance, um, um, Tron, um, Arbitrum that have very, very low fees. So when I say it's relative, meaning there are exceptions to it. So um, trustlessness. Blockchain technology enables trust, uh, transparent transactions verified and validated by network participants themselves without trusted intermediaries. So I've explained this around um, decentralization when I stated it earlier on. So, uh, so now we are moving to another key point. What is blockchain used for? Because like I said, blockchain is the technology. But you know, technologies have basic uses, can be used for basic stuff. So um, one of the uses of technology of the technology called blockchain is cryptocurrency is cryptocurrency so blockchain technology was developed to support the creation of cryptocurrency which uses blockchain as a secure and distributed ledger for recording transactions so cryptocurrency is the financial aspect of this technology you get so we have other financial aspects, but cryptocurrency is one of the financial aspects of the technology called blockchain. So we have one of the uses to be um, cryptocurrency. The second use we have digital identity. Digital identity. B blockchain can be used to create secured and um, tamper-proof digital identity that can be used to verify personal information and other sensitive data. This could become increasingly important as more of our personal information and, as, and assets moves online. For instance, now, um, for instance, now, um, let's say I have my NIN ID card or I have any government issued ID card, driver's license, international passport. We can build it on the blockchain and there will be nothing like, ah, it lost, my ID card people will lose. Because you know, I stated earlier on that any transaction that is written on the blockchain or that is successful on the blockchain is permanent. You get, you can only update it, but you cannot delete it. That's what it's relative. So when we move on, I will explain what I just made mention of. So, <clears throat> sorry. So, um, digital identity. So we have things like NFT, 
where you can do a image of yourself you can design an image of yourself and sell it online you can design an image of yourself and you, people will not be able to duplicate it you get you can have your cse registrations online and as on blockchain and once it's done it becomes permanent there are a lot of possibilities or use cases around the blockchain so that's number two then number three we are voting so by providing a decentralized temper proof ledger of all vote cast blockchain technology can be used to create a secure and transparent voting system that eliminates the possibility of vote, voters fraud and ensure the um, integrity of the voting process for instance now um let's say a country wants to do a, a temper proof um, voting system where we don't want to be hearing okay this happened ballot box was stolen this 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 happened what they just need to do is to have a well planned out system on the blockchain that records those votes you get so once the vote once i'm casting my vote in any part of the world is showing everybody can see it you get you might not be able to know who cast it. they can do it in an anonymous way where you might not be knowing who casted the vote but you will see every legit vote and there are concepts around this and you can use nft to represent the voting system you can use nft to project the voting system also so um i'm trying as much as possible not to use any familiar uh, examples so that's about it about voting so if you have any question please ensure to drop please ensure to drop your questions in the chat sections so let's move to the fourth one that supply chain management um some persons i used to tell some people that whatever you're studying in school you can find a way to bring it into the technology called blockchain we just stated some few areas that are the uses of blockchain it's not just limited to it the technology is projecting decentralization eliminating middlemen meaning if you can eliminate middlemen in one area or the other from your um field of study maybe projecting a sector and eliminate middlemen meaning you are trying to onboard your sector into the blockchain space innovations are possible once you can sit down to figure it out you'll be able to achieve that so supply chain management it has to do with the accounting guys and all so if you studied business admin accounting i think you should be able to function more around this and understand how it works so um, blockchain technology can be used to create a ledger of all transactions within a supply chain um each transactions can be recorded as a block on the transaction on the blockchain creating an immutable and transparent record of the entire supply chain process for instance now we can have a company and say okay we want to create a blockchain based um ledger for recording all our activities you get so um instead of having one accountant doing all the works you can have the people that are doing the supply and everything record it themselves you get so over time we'll see a lot of improvements we'll see a lot of changes but before those changes come Try as much as possible to see where you can position yourself and get rolling. There are a lot of potentials and a lot of possibility the technology block called blockchain carries, and we can benefit from it to the maximum capacity. So the fifth one is called smart contracts. Smart contract. Smart contracts are self-executing contracts that can be programmed to execute automatically when certain conditions are met for instance now let me use a normal illustration let's say um i have okay like let's use our atm machine for an instance the atm machine now it's programmed that if somebody comes and put his card inside if you notice there's money there remove the money and give the person cash that's the um agreement within the atm machine and your and the customer so the bank can go and sleep because they know they've set a contract that au machine if mr a brings his card and you discover there's money there give him cash 
but if there's no money there, tell him there is no money. So that's the concept of smart contracts. So on the blockchain, there are um, agreements, technological agreements um, you can interact with. And, they will, and the agreements are basically on statements like, if this person wants to buy a token, collect that one and give this person another, the one he wants to buy. So behind all those swapping you are doing, behind all those selling you are doing is a smart contract. Behind all those taking you are doing, behind all those farming you are doing, behind all those stuff you are doing is a smart contract. And that smart contract is designed to follow some statements. You discover some transactions will tell you increase slippage because the smart contract was instructed to work with a specific slippage. If you don't know what slippage are, I think in the last days are for practicals. And I will take my time to make sure we go through those practicals effectively well. We'll be having a screen shared like this and we'll be going live online and doing those things one by one. Probably we can also use um, shared screen from phone or I still use the system to get things done properly well. Okay, so blockchain technology enables the creation of an execution of smart contracts in a secure and decentralized manner. One of the most promising applications of smart contracts is the decentralized application DAPS, where we start moving into centralized applications and decentralized applications. You will know understand what this DAOs means and also organization that is DAO, decentralized autonomous organizations. I think we'll treat that hopefully tomorrow. So tomorrow we have a lot of talks to go into. Today is the day one and probably introduction sections. So let's move. What is consensus mechanism? Consensus mechanism, consensus algorithm is the mechanism that allows users to or machines to coordinate in a distributed settings meaning the the runnings of um the of the system is done by a consensus algorithm so and the the mechanism used in running all the systems is called consensus algorithm so and we have various types of consensus algorithm yeah bro this brings me back to this there are some people you will hear that they will tell you that come and mine tron with your android phone this part will show you what you can mine what there's a possibility of mining and what is a scam you get because the algorithm that makes bitcoin function is it is called consensus mechanism and it has a name you get it's just like the, the 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 things that make a bank function is called staffs and those staffs are the ones that pull work together both both in the accounting section the counter the every section manager and all they are the staffs that make sure the bank is functional so as in the crypto space to make sure a cryptocurrency is functioning well there is a consensus algorithm Maybe the English big, but I think I've been able to use the bank illustration to um, give us a perspective. Meaning, this consensus algorithm, they are the one that make for a successful transaction. That means in a bank, to have a successful transaction, you can't do without the accountants, the staffs in general. So as in um, a particular blockchain like Bitcoin, you cannot do anything on Bitcoin without um, um, passing through the consensus algorithm like the engine house of bitcoin you get so we would have a lot of consensus algorithm for instance now um, let's say they say you should come and mine B um, binance smart chain or come and mine ethereum or come and mine a project that is a proof of work a proof of stake you will know that okay um, based of what based on what i've learned this cannot be mined you get so um, that's one of the things we'll be throwing light on as we proceed. So let's move to um, um, the types of consensus mechanism. 
types of consensus mechanism. We have proof of work is the first type of consensus mechanism. With proof of work, miners complete, compete against each other to validate the next transaction block and earn a reward. This is highly energy. Okay, let's just take the first part. So for proof of work, like the name is, you will prove that you are working. Like Bitcoin now, you need to prove that you are working. And to work on Bitcoin as um, on Bitcoin consensus mechanism is just more like Bitcoin consensus mechanism. This is the system that makes transactions successful on Bitcoin chain. You get so if this system stops working, the chain stops functioning. You get so and on Bitcoin, it's called proof of work. Proof of work in the sense that it's real computers that you use to mine it, that you use to to make those transactions come to um, become successful. When I use the word mining, I don't I don't want people to have a misconception. That's why I want to eliminate the word mining. So normally it's supposed to be mining. But because the word mining has generally been polluted, let's try to um, explain from another point of view. So, for instance, now, if I want to send money from point A to point B, if there's no consensus mechanism to validate this transaction, it will not be successful. And the mechanisms that validate Bitcoin in, it requires that a computer be solving mathematical problems a computer be solving mathematical problems to make sure it's successful. And the first person to solve that problem will receive a reward for solving the problem. That's why it states here that they compete against each other to validate the next transaction block and earn a reward if they are the one that validates the transaction you get. So, and one of the disadvantages of this is that to money. To manage the computer, you must have quality internet access. You must have a well-conditioned atmosphere. You must have constant energy supply to be consistently making the money. That's why some people actually buy, there's what they call mining machine. I think we have ant miner, we have um, Genesis miner. There are a lot of mining machines you can use to mine Bitcoin. And... Uh, those machines, most times people don't really use it because if you're using one, the effect is not very much. But when you're using a thousand of those machines, then you'll be able to make substantial money. I think the last I checked, let me not, let's not go into that because so we don't make cause for confusions around them. So consensus mechanism for Bitcoin is proof of work. Yeah, so proof of work. So like I said, is the mechanism that makes Bitcoin transactions successful. And I feel there's only, there are very few projects that uses proof of work. That means they use machines to make transactions successful. I think, let me show us an example of um, probably a mining machine. Let me show some example of a mining machine. If you can see the mining machine on my screen, please indicate. Okay, so this is what a mining machine looks like. So, like you can see, this guy has one, two, three, about three here. Um, and if you scroll, if I scroll down, you'll be seeing some. Okay, for instance, this you have a lot of it. So it's majorly efficient when they are more in numbers. So this is what a mining machine looks like. So you use it to mine Bitcoin. When they say mine, it just means I'm using this machine to make sure to make Bitcoin transactions successful. You get is that's just the concept. You are using this machine to ensure Bitcoin transaction is successful. So sometimes when they say you are mining with phone, the pens is relative, but I don't think it's we've actually seen those technologies that can mine Bitcoin with phone of um successfully, but there are there are um technologies can come up. In nearest future but most of the ones we are seeing around are not real so the next consensus mechanism we have here is proof of stake proof of stake proof of stake so yeah what proof of stake is is 
Okay, proof of stake is a, is a consensus mechanism where those with the largest holding on a network currency validates new block. This enables faster and lower cost transaction. It rewards those with the biggest stake in the network for continued participation. For instance, now Ethereum migrated from proof of work, that's number one, to proof of stake. The proof of stake simply means um, there's what is called farming and staking. A staker helps transactions to be successful. For instance, if I have a thousand dollar and I want to help Ethereum transaction to be successful, I think you can you can um, stake less than I think above twenty Ethereum or so. But there are some projects you can stake as low as a thousand dollars. So let's say I want to make a project transaction successful, and the project is not using proof of work. For instance, few only few projects uses proof of work. I used to talk. Okay, before we finish this class, I'll tell you about the basics research you can do. Please, I mean, in case I forget, somebody should just try and remind me about that. So, so um, I think I dropped the link to the call, so you can check up few messages above. I dropped the link to the to the um. VC. So, um, proof of stake is that okay. We don't want to use machines to do these transaction validations. We want to. We want people that have money to come and put their money as staking or as farming to make transactions go faster. There's a difference between staking and farming. When you say staking, it happens with just one currency. But when you say farming, it happens with the peer currency. We're going to details on that in coming classes. So, um, proof of stake meaning we have cash. We want our cash to help us validate transactions. Note when you stake, they give you reward because when they charge people for transaction fees, most projects give that transaction fees to the stakers. You get while some give them um, tokens, of which tokens are not necessarily healthy. You get. So um, that's that about um, proof of stake. So we have proof of authority. We have proof of history. I will not list proof of history here. We have delegated proof of stake. So let's just run through this. Um, proof of history. Proof of history is, um, proof of authority, sorry. Proof of authority is not as common, but has a unique form. It is used mainly by private companies or organization that use block created by vented source who have special permissions to access the network. Assurance are based on reputation and authority rather than public consensus as with other mechanisms. So this is proof of authority. Then it's not popularly known. Then we have delegated proof of stake. is a varieties of proof of stake. POS, POS means proof of stake, in which users who stake their coin can vote on the number of delegates to create new blocks. Yeah, so meaning you can stake, you can do proof of stake and have the ability to vote because you put your money inside it. We'll talk more on this when we start talking about DAO, that decentralized autonomous, autonomous organization. Um, tomorrow and next will be very, very lengthy and very detailed. So try as much as possible not to miss tomorrow's class. Thank you very much for your time. I believe you learned 18 or two from this section. Hopefully before tomorrow morning, we'll have the section uploaded live on YouTube. So is there any question? So we can attend to questions before we proceed. Okay, so um, in the absence of no question, um, I want you to do something very important. Um, I'll be dropping a series of hashtags now on the group. Ensure you go on your Twitter account. Ensure you go on your Twitter account and use the hashtags. I will be dropping them on the group. So you use the hashtags to make a write-up of what you learned from today's class. Use the write-up. To make a write-up of what you learned from today's class, 
post it and we'll be able to see your post via the hashtags so ensure you use um the hashtags to do it so thank you very much guys um that will be the end for today's class cheers and god bless you